Radiation, something kids associate with their favourite X-Men mutants. But in actual fact, it's the poor fella that's been doing your dirty job. Heating up your food lets you insta-story 24-7, stream Netflix and occasionally take pictures of your bones and organs. But like anything that makes life too convenient... Somewhere down the line, we've got to pay for it. With the growing demand for electronic, automobile, energy generation, the world is hungry for resources that makes them, even if it means hurting ourselves. Back in 2012, the people of Guantan rose up against Linus Corp from building a 100-hectare rare earth plant in Gebeng. People were afraid of the toxic radioactivity waste, causing cancer and defective babies. Just like what happened in Bukit Merah in 1982. The population there suffered 8 cases of leukemia and 7 cases of death. A former worker at the refinery even gave birth to a child with physical defects and mental problems. The fear of history repeating itself in Gebeng was very real. Now, if you still recall, there were protests outside the plant, the 300km rally from Kuantan to KL, photos of that dramatic feat splashed across the media. It's hard to believe that despite the massive outcry, this particular factory was still allowed to operate for the last six years. If it wasn't for the government's announcement to form a Linus Evaluation Committee, the public's memory of the Australian miner would have faded. Now, Linus could have kept a low key about it. After all, they have accepted many reviews done by international boards, including twice by the United Nations International Atomic Energy Agency in 2011 and 2014. So, what's another probe by local government worth fussing over? One, because Linus Malaysia's operating license is up for renewal in September next year. And two, an openly anti-Linus MP Fuzia Saleh is heading the committee. The firm's CEO Amanda Lacasse jumped at the news, saying Linus isn't getting a fair go. To this, Fuzia hits back and said that this panel represents the government's interests and need not be independent. She said if this was an independent panel, her appointment would be an issue. But this is an executive committee. Having dumped in 3 billion ringgit in investments, it's clear that Linus isn't simply going to pack up and go. And for the record, despite the controversy, there hasn't been any case of harm in the past 6 years. Yet. And seriously, it's been 6 years. Are we happy with letting profits and politics pull us by the nose until something bad happens? Like the case of Bukit Merah, Research and information about the refinery came to a conflicting conclusion. Some say the radiation level picked up on the plant's surroundings was too low to pose any health risk, while some studies claim that radioactive levels are off the roof. Same goes for Linus. The general public is confused about what to believe. Are our fears real and scientifically proven? Or is it merely a manifestation of the not-in-my-backyard syndrome? But what exactly is Linus putting in our backyard that's freaking us out? It's radioactive waste from mining. Now, definitely I'm not a scientist, so I'll let Lacasse explain how they deal with it. So, the requirements for construction of the PDF are very clear. It is about ensuring that it is lined, that it has um, uh, uh, drainage so that you don't get anything which seeps into the in surrounding <coughs> environment so it is completely contained. Holy cow! So the waste is just going to sit there forever? The number one objective should be to reuse that material. Secondly, if that doesn't work, it should be put in a permanent uh, a storage facility. And third, in our licence, it says if neither of those two things are successful, then we, we should ship it back to Australia. In 2014, an independent review by the international radiation expert IAEA also certified the Gebeng plant posing low radiation risks. But who is IAEA? Are they even reliable? Last I checked, IAEA is a big fan of nuclear energy and is being accused of cozying up to nuclear reactor and defence industries. But just last year, Linus said its R&D managed to turn its residue into soil conditioner and the product was confirmed by Atomic Energy Licensing Board and Nuclear Malaysia as non-radioactive. But it turns out, cerium didn't give the green light. Oh, and also our MP Jayakuma says that Linus is releasing toxic water into Sungai Balok. Heck, 
who do I trust? Fuzia said the reason behind another probe is to deliver the Pakatan government's election promise, which is to govern the country based on principles of sustainability and sustainable development. Oh, I see. But what if the evaluation finds that the plant is safe and it's politically unpopular to let it stay? Who's to say an openly anti lioness campaigner heading a three-month review isn't just wasting time on another potentially biased report? Ayah, then later do another study law, do until you're happy. Let's not forget, despite the controversy, Linus' existence is still business for the country and jobs for our people. If the plant shuts down without solid proof of causing damage to our health and environment, thousands of jobs are wiped out. Quoting one of their staff at the protest, he says he voted for the Pakatan government, but now it has come back to bite him. Now, reviewing the miner's conduct ahead of its license renewal is a great opportunity to weed out what's bad for us. So give us a process we can trust and a report we are confident in. But if this is treated as firewood to fuel political agendas, Malaysia Baru isn't that Baru after all. I mean, we didn't renew the last government's license because we don't trust them. So who's to say we won't do it again? Just saying. Thank you.